People always say, T, you gotta do more job site videos. We, want, we the people want to see more job sites. Well, we the people, here's the job site, okay? This is gonna be a great one. This job is $125,000 before any change orders. I don't know what the title says, but right now, as of right now, 125 starting. It is a complete whole property. All the paving stays, driveway stay, everything is good. Let's go walk around. Don't hit your head, careful. So all this, all of this stays. We're gonna rip out all the soft skate. There's gonna be zero grass here. We have a lady in this home. She's been here for, I think, 40 years or so. And she doesn't wanna do anything with maintenance anymore. She wants everything, no maintenance, artificial turf, beautiful plants, some rocks, some mulch, very pretty, no maintenance, okay? So this is what we're gonna do. Let's go walk around and we'll show you what the property looks like. And if you're wondering, you're like, T, is this a free job? I'm not at that point yet. I can't give away $125,000 job for free. But if you like the video and it gets millions of views, I will definitely do it, okay? Like the video though. Nice booty. Very strange. The only hardscape we're gonna replace is this right here. And I have already gone around with the homeowner and I've marked all the plants in orange paint that are being removed. The boys know this already. The brick border stays. All the plants that are marked in orange, they go. And this grass area goes. So without further ado, time lapse. Coaster started. Let's go. The people are waiting. $120,000 landscape job. That's right. Here we go. Gather around. I'm about to give you some nice juicy details. I want to give a special shout out to the customer, Carolyn. She was an absolute dream to work with. Super nice and um, very easygoing. And she just was down for my suggestions. And I really like that. And how I met her was she gave me a call and she said, hey, I have a landscape job. And she described everything to me. And I said, this is great. I can definitely do something like this for you. And uh, I went out there and saw what she had, measured some things with her, and it, the job came out to be $100,000 in just artificial turf. And she said, that's a little too much. And I said, I know the perfect thing for you. I referred her to a designer named Kim, and Kim is a plant guru, wizard. She's just a pro. Anything with plants and her designs are absolutely awesome. Here is a here is a little screenshot of her design. And as you can see, everything is super well organized, a ton of plants. And she has ground cover all the way by the street. She has artificial turf, um, pavers. Everything is so organized and laid out. And this is what I needed the first time I met with Carolyn. Because without that, it's so hard to actually give an accurate price without overestimating or underestimating and especially for a, a person that doesn't do this often as like a customer it's hard for them to visualize so when you sell them on the design then they really understand how the project goes and um, i didn't i've actually never met the designer which is kind of crazy isn't it but she is one of the ogs in california now you see the boys are trenching underneath pathways, underneath stone, and uh, we're doing that for irrigation. This particular one, there was no lighting on the design, and I asked the homeowner, I said, hey, Carolyn, I think it'd be a great idea if we do some lights. And she said, she didn't really care about lights because she goes to sleep early. And I said, hmm, there you go then. So we did no lights on her, but a lot of good things we did. Now, I just want to share some numbers with you because I know everyone's like, oh, share some numbers, T. Share some numbers. I got you. So this job took, let's see, I got my spreadsheet right in front of me, 12, 30. So this job took 18 days, 18 days. So three weeks and three days. We work Monday through Friday. And uh, it took three weeks because we had, 
Every single day we worked, Monday through Friday, and then we had another three days to finish. And uh, the crew size ranged from four people some days all the way to nine people other days. So it was really varied on what we were doing. Like in the demo part, we had four guys the first day, six guys the second day, eight guys the third day, six guys the fourth day. Fifth day, we had seven guys. And on the last day, we had six guys. It just ranged from six to, six to nine, six to nine, 69. That's right. Oh, right now, look at this. We're putting in gopher wire in this area, which is called Saratoga, California. Gophers are like little crackheads. They're everywhere. And they will eat all your plants. They will eat all your vegetables. So, and I've even seen it where we do base rock the day before and then we come back and there's gophers digging everywhere all over the base rock so that's why we put gopher wire underneath the turf just as a safety precaution because these guys are little rascals now we start doing the demo for the front the most important part about digging for the turf especially in this area oh i should show them the design okay we'll, we'll throw the design up right here and i'll just walk you through the design and um, you'll see why it is what it is. Now, you see the front yard? It has a strip going along. It's about 10 to 12 feet wide. And uh, that whole thing right there is... And that whole thing right there is an area so it wouldn't be too much turf. That was the problem when I first came out to her house. We had 100 grand in just turf. And she said, that's too much. So that's what the designer was there for. She made sure that we would stay on budget because her budget was around 100 and then she, uh, she bumped it up to 125. And here we go. We're doing some more drilling underneath the sidewalk. This is super important because this connects the, uh, this flower bed to the big one. <clears throat> that way we can get water underneath. It takes some time. As you can see, it's not easy to do that. And what we like to do is we just put in, since we're already <clears throat> trenching for one, we like to put two in. Because uh, in the future, if anything happens, if anything fails, then we just ditch the other pipe and roll with the, the, the other one we put in. So my understanding of the turf job was that we could not put... We can, so my understanding of the turf job was that we cannot put all of the turf in. We cannot roll the turf out in one direction. It had to be all looking at the street. So once the turf is looking at the street, that's when it looks the best because then the green really pops. Now what are we doing here? We're doing a little trenching. And um, if you guys remember, I got Jesus. He was the one that was in charge of this site. I got Jesus a laptop and he was the one that was going around measuring everything. So a lot of contractors, what they do is they have plans that are on paper. And when I first started, that's how I was doing it too. If you guys ever bought my contract program, that's how I used to do stuff. I used to literally go to Office Max or UPS and they used to print out a three by two, 36 by 24 inch plan. And then I used to sit there with a ruler measuring shit. It was inefficient. So I discovered a, a new program and it has, you, can, you do everything on a computer. You literally open it on the computer. You open the plan on the computer and then you set the scale and you measure everything like that. And it's super accurate. So I got Jesus a computer and he was going around, walking around, measuring everything per design. That saves so much time. And uh, we probably used four cans of spray paint on this job, but it's super, super, super cost effective and you don't waste time with labor. The most important part of this job was labor. Now you'd be like, T, are you sure about that? Let's see, let's go look at the spreadsheet. Look at this, my 
my labor for this job was $53,817. Isn't that crazy? Almost 60 grand in just payroll on overhead. That's nuts. And uh, my expenses, they're around 35. So <clears throat> that's not a, the, the, the materials are way less, way less than all the labor. Labor is the most expensive thing and that's what you have to be very careful with when you're starting out in business. And now, look at this. We have a great camera angle. This is the fall. The leaves are falling. Everything's looking good. That caterpillar is no longer with me. That's the one I gave away a couple weeks ago. I replaced it with a 279. If you know anything about cats, the 279 is an absolute monster. That thing is a beast. The 259 is really good, but the 279 is so much better when it comes to doing anything with dirt work. Uh, the reach on that thing is awesome. You see these uh, black edging? This <clears throat> is very important because originally we had priced out um, we had priced out a bender board per design, but I asked her and I said, hey, for an extra 1300 bucks, do you think you'd want to do black metal edging because it looks the best? And she was like, what does it look like? And I showed her a picture and she said, that looks really nice. And I said, yes, yes, it does. So we did that. So we got her on that. And that was the right move because the black metal edging, psh, man, that stuff is the best. It looks very modern. Putting some base in. Putting some base in. So you see, if they excavate too much, then they have to fill it in on the sides. That's why the computer is so important because he comes in and he just click, 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 click. And he has all the measurements. This was my job. I used to... At every single job, I used to be out here, and I used to do that until I said, why am I doing this, dude? Just go out, spend a 1000 bucks, get a computer, and uh, now the employees do that, which is way better. Now you'd be like, T, what was up with that trailer? Uh, Jesus, he put base rock in that trailer, which he was not supposed to, so we had a little discussion. That green trailer is a very special trailer. I bought it just for moving equipment. That's it. And if they need like a yard of dirt or something, you can get it. If you need mulch, you can get it. Soil and concrete and base rock stay out of that trailer because trailers literally get ruined when they have so much weight. Those dump trailers are not meant to haul eight yards of soil. It's too much, way too much. That's what semi trucks are for. All my base rock gets delivered buy semi trucks here we go we got more trenching you see that compactor right there that will ensure the best compaction that is a fifteen thousand dollar compactor <clears throat> i think the compaction force on that thing is shit i don't even know it was something crazy it was like twelve thousand pounds or more <laughs> look at this guy look at this guy he's he's trenching 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 watch this ready and then here jesus catches him and he says hey you're not supposed to be trenching in there so literally he fills it in and then he goes to trench on the other side unbelievable that probably that mistake right there probably took 30 minutes 30 minutes of labor gone and you'd be like, oh, why am I not making money? Well, because your main guy should be literally directing the whole job. And that was one of my struggles in the beginning. Still is. It's a work in progress. So when I tell the guys, I tell my leads, 
my foreman, you have to be a director. You cannot be an employee like them. You have to be constantly making sure everybody's doing the right thing because one little mistake like that, it can cost hundreds of dollars. And that mistake only took 30 minutes. It's not only the 30 minutes that that guy took to make the mistake. It's what could that guy have done in 30 minutes of actually doing the right thing. So not only did you lose 30 minutes and you had to redo it, but now you're 30 minutes behind. So hashtag not good. Not good. Right now they're doing, look at this, all the little dirt they're putting in there. They're making it very nice and hilly like a riverbed. FedEx coming in hot, dropping off some weed block for us. When I order stuff on, on Amazon or internet, I just ship it directly to the house. And I tell my guys, I'm like, hey, stuff is coming. It's working, working, working. Nice tree. This lady's been living at this house for, I think, 80, no, not 80, uh, Maybe 50 years. Oh, oh, oh no. Coaster, it's lagging. What do I do? I think you broke it. Uh oh. Hold on. Now we are rolling. What was I talking about? Yeah, whatever. We'll start over. Okay, so the, the video started lagging a little bit, so I had to do a voiceover again. Now we're doing some weed block. Now, I know there's a lot of plant experts out there, especially the ones that watch my videos, and you say, T, I'm a plant expert. When you do weed block over soil, the soil becomes less fertile, and the soil doesn't let plants grow properly. I mean, the, the weed block doesn't let plants grow properly. You are correct, I'd have to say. But remember, the customer needs are different than your professional organic soil expert knowledge has. She doesn't want maintenance. We give her no maintenance. So weed block it is. Boys are working, working, working. Oh, that's what we're talking about. The employees, my project managers. That's right. All right, so back on that. I will I will tell you it is a work in progress. It is not easy to go from me running cuz you know you got you have if you've been watching my videos for the last 3 4 years. You have seen that I was a owner operator type of deal, you know? I would sell the deal manage the deal, close the deal out, manage all the employees, all that stuff. But now, I want to go, Right, currently right now I'm at two crews, full time, when it's not raining. Right now we're experiencing some rain delays. In California it's going to rain 10 days strict, which is nuts. It's biblical. Jesus is coming down. Nose That's right, nose arc, I'm building it. Um, and uh, I went from just my crew now we have two separate crews and pretty soon in Jan Feb we're going to go to three crews and eventually the ideal scene is to get to four crews or five crews I want to be doing at least in the 10 million by next year that's the goal. That's the goal. That's the target. And I need really great people to do that with. And I can't be running the site at all times. So that's why I bought my guys computers. I get him phones. Um, Jose, for example, he doesn't want a phone. He has his own phone. But I pay for his service. So it's like 60 bucks, 80 bucks. I don't know how much it is. 80 bucks a month, I think. And um, I did get him a laptop. They both have trucks. Each crew, I found out, is... Uh, it's super important for them to have a utility truck. Now that utility truck can go out and pick up artificial turf, 
go out and pick up rebar. You can go out and pick up materials, pallets. And um, that's why it's super important to have a utility truck. That ladder rack is key. And it's four-wheel drive. It has to be four-wheel drive. I learned my lesson the first time. I bought my first utility truck, and it wasn't four-wheel drive. And that really got me angry. Because one time, at a particular day in December, when it was a little rainy, I sent my guy to the dump. And he was dumping. And when he went to pull forward, he got stuck. And the people at the dump are not the nicest. And they just keep yelling. So literally, it took him an hour and a half to get unstuck. Some other nice guy towed him out. And I said, never again will I ever get a two-wheel drive truck. That's not a dump truck or semi-truck. Because all the the 550 is a two-wheel drive. And the, the new Kenworth I got, that is also two-wheel drive. But if you get that Kenworth stuck, I'll be very surprised. That thing is a freaking beast. So this was the job that I actually got the Kenworth. And by the way, if you're in the truck market and you're like, man, you think I should get a truck T? Hell yeah. You should definitely get a truck. Now, a lot of you messaged me and you said, you're so stupid. Why didn't you get a um, a big semi truck like a triple axle or an end dump? Hmm. I would like to get one, but... Then I have to hire a CDL driver. And the people that drive... The people that drive... And the people that drive the 550 or the utility trucks, they can actually legally be allowed to drive the Kenworth. And I have spent about... Hmm, I'd say probably 40 hours in the Kenworth. So I've gotten... I haven't mastered it, but... I'm pretty decent at driving it. It's really fun. And um, going to the dump is super easy with that because you don't have to get out. That's right. You can literally stay in your truck. The only thing you have to get out for is to do the tarp. And right now, measure, remember, measure two, three times, cut once. Measure two, three times, cut once. So this part was tricky. If you see the street, right? Now, the rolls are 15 feet wide. Some of the areas on the turf were 12 feet. Some of the areas were 11 feet. Some of the areas were 13 feet. Now, we could have literally rolled it out sideways, but it wouldn't have looked as good because the blades of the grass would be facing sideways versus the street. And... You really see how nice the turf is when you're driving in the street. The blades have to be looking on the street. So that's what we did. A lot of guys. We got one, two, three, four, four people doing nails and cuts. It's very, very labor intensive. If you're not charging 15 bucks plus for turf, you're going to get your little booty handed to you because this is super super labor intensive i think for this one i charged 18 dollars a square because number one gopher wire edging lots of nails lots of cuts um the nails on the sides by the by the border those are really important because if um, you go to it and try to lift it up and it comes up, you're going to have problems. You're going to have a big problem. So you cannot save on nails, especially on the borders. Those are the utility trucks I'm talking about. The thing is a money maker. that truck. It transports rebar, artificial turf, concrete, all the tools, drills, um, drill bits, random stuff. 
It's four wheel drive. It can hold five people. I think actually I think it holds six people. It has a bench in the front. A bench in the front. Yeah, it can hold six. And it's got a lot of power. Some of you might be asking, yo, why don't you get your guys a diesel truck? They don't tow a lot with this thing. It's very rare to tow with that thing once in a while. Because think about it. Most of the time I get semi-trucks to deliver this stuff. The only time that he tows with that truck is to go to the dump or to go pick up a little bit of mulch. But other than that, no big deal. A lot of nails, a lot of nails. Look at this. Blah, 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 blah. This particular job, I think, I'm going to go to my spreadsheet. So what I started doing in the beginning is doing spreadsheets for everything. So on plants, I will tell you exactly how much I spent on plants. Mm -hmm. Where are the plants at? Base rock, turf, weed block, concrete, nails, planter mix. Oh, here we go. Plants were $5,000. Gopher wire was $1,300. Yeah. That's a lot. I spent a lot of dough on this place. Weed block, turf, base rock. Looking good though. Looking real good. Mm -hmm. If you see, I got a very nice sign. And that sign says Applewood Landscaping. Will you, will you believe that? Oh, we should give a, we should give an update on Coaster. How's your wrist? People want to know after, if you guys don't know, Coaster, he's a cameraman, video genius, video gangster, and he recently was riding a one wheel and he got hit by a car. He broke his wrist. And now, I'm doing a lot better. He got his cast today. Mm -hmm. It has dinosaurs. It does have dinosaurs. I also got a, a brace for my ankle. Wow, you did. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. It was all bruised. Mm. Like I told him, he said, oh, uh, let me go talk to my ankle specialist. Mm. And I said, okay. He said, yeah, it just looks like, um, uh, like a medium sprain. And I said, here's this brace. And he said, thank you. Nice. That was nice. So we are... In the process of pursuing a legal case versus against this guy, Coaster's working per performance has suffered drastically because he went from a person that has two hands to one. Now that's a fifty percent drop yeah. in production. Also, he has a messed up ankle. Not good, not good. <laughs> but if Coaster becomes a millionaire off of this, it'll be very good. Very good. Did you know you pay no taxes when you get a settlement like this? Oh, you really? Yeah. Because I remember my dad got hurt. He fell and uh, he, uh, he did, he hurt his, he fell off a big ladder. Like it was like 15 feet and he broke his uh, shoulder. And yeah, they did a workman's comp and he got like, I think 150 grand or 200,000, something like that. Wow. Yeah. And it was t tax free, non taxable event. So I think your settlement, when you do get one, will be a non taxable event. That would be awesome. That would be a great offer. Great offer. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So now, so that's Jesus on the left. And he's talking to Carlos. We are doing some paver action. This is gonna be herringbone. This is the only place that we were gonna do some hardscape. 
She just wanted a nice path to go from her turf to her street. And that's it. So she she actually wanted to pick a pattern. But I told her, I'm like, since you have 210 square feet, it doesn't make financial sense for me to get a pattern because I have to get a three-piece plus a border. And it's just going to cost too much because I have to just literally throw away a bunch of material. So I told her, I explained to her why it's best to do only one size so we got six by 12 herringbone and then we got six by 12 borders easier for the guys i love installing herringbone literally my in my opinion my favorite pattern and uh all they do is they just grip it and rip it and cut it see that boom they cut a straight line And after that, oh, look at that. Magically, it's done. So this is the part where we had to do a, like a dry creek riverbed. So it was funny because the homeowner came out while we were doing this. And she said, man, this looks really good. And then when we were done, she didn't like it. Not one bit. So we had to redo it. Uh, it wasn't up to her liking because the it was just too big. And she said, I want something smaller. I don't want something this big. She said, it looks like a rock quarry. And I said, hmm, you might be right. So we did. No, had no charge because she was really cool. If I could have her as a customer forever, psh, I wish every customer was like her. There was no problems, no drama. We only made one mistake, and that was the garden bed. Or not the garden bed, the rock, river rock, dry creek river bed. And we just made it too big. And as you see in this design, it is <laughs> freaking big. <laughs> it's pretty big. It's big. It's big. Even Coaster says it's big. And uh, Jesus called me, and she's like, he's like, hey, uh, she doesn't like it. And I was like, what do you mean? And he's like, it's too big. And I said, okay, let me call her. So I call her and I said, so you don't like the river rock bed? And she said, no, I don't. It's like, it's too big. It makes me nervous. <laughs> and I said, okay, no problem. Sorry about that. We will, uh, we will fix it. We literally made it smaller. Watch, in a little bit, you'll see. You'll see them start taking it out. Cleaning, cleaning, cleaning. And then, when are they gonna start taking it out? I think right about, nope, not now. Okay, there it is. See this? They're just taking it apart. And the camera is going in three, two, oh! We fell, picked back up. Rediscovered by Jesus or Florentino. So we just peeled it back, they just replaced the tire. See this is why I can't stand doing dump runs. Because this particular trailer is not meant for dirt. These trailers are garbage. Alright boys, the video is coming to an end. Let me know what you thought. Leave a like, heart, comment, heart, whatever you want to do. Also, if you want more in-depth details on how I do jobs and more expense reports and all this stuff, uh, join Go King. I share everything with you. And you can ask me anything. Unscripted, uncensored. Go King is literally changing lives. 600 plus people in there, and we're all headed towards the right direction. The finished product. Dun, 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 dun. Bam. So this is what it looks like. We just got to get that fork out of there. And the boys are 99% done. Dun, da, da, dun. So now we're doing this right here. As you see, 
obviously in the time lapse this was much bigger but when the homeowner came out we we're doing a final walkthrough she was a very nice lady i really like her a lot probably one of my favorite customers and she just was very concerned about how big this thing was and she's like it's too big i said i can't i can't she's very concerned so i said okay tell me how big you want it so she wanted like this so we spent an extra you know four hours doing this moving some of the plants uh, this rock we'll use at another job literally the next job we're doing same thing this we got i went and bought extra mulch and well not me personally but we bought mulch and last thing we got to do is put sand in the pavers but now we go to the backyard sometimes you get customers that don't like this and she was very nice about it so i said let's roll i'll take care of it this is the artificial turf in the back. Everything here is very, very, very manicured. Very pretty. Very clean. The plants are looking good. Wheelbarrow, nice wheelbarrow. Hello. This area, much I mean, it's, it looks the same, right? But it's just cleaner, updated, modern. Well, not a modern. This place is cleaner, updated, and very manicured. Very neat and organized. And then we have this area right here. As you see, the boys are finishing up lunch. Coaster, blur, blur out this address. Okay. And the cool part is, check this out. The turf is very nice. We upgraded her black metal edging this is my favorite edging it's very hidden plastic one sucks so now all we have to do is this and then we're out of here 